Hi, I'm Noelle from Gertie Roll. Um, today, we're going to be doing a video on cooping. Cooping is the sound of the buzz that the trumpet makes. So your trumpet string, which we've talked about before, this high string up here, is a drum. And when I engage my wrist, poignet, so the wrist, it's going to lift the dog off the platform very quickly and hit the platform again, which makes the coop. So what we're gonna do today is learn how to do that effectively, um, how to engage the wrist so that you can create a crisp, clean buzzing sound um, or a coop. And we're gonna work on the basics, the coop one and the coop three because there are four positions, but we're gonna work just on the coupe one and then the coupe three, because those are the, the two that we always wanna begin with. Traditionally, there's four coupe positions. Uh, one, two, three, and four. One is all gravity down. Two is pulling a drawer open. Three is gravity up, so hucking something over your shoulder, and four, is pushing the drawer shut. So one is down, gravity. Two is bringing the drawer open. Three, hucking something over your shoulder. And four is pushing the drawer shut. And I think that there's a, a lot of emphasis on the position, like this is where one is, this is where two is, this is where three is, this is where four is. And for some people that are spatially aware, that might be helpful. But what's always been helpful to me is what you're doing with your arm. So like if gravity is down, I'm going like this with my arm. And that's where my one is. If all gravity is up, I'm doing this with my arm. So that's where three is. And those are the two coupes that we're going to learn today. Gravity down and gravity up. So one and three. And you'll remember from the previous videos, the reason why we spent so much time talking about a half note being a full rotation. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, is because when you're cranking in time, now it's much easier to be able to coop in time as well. Because now that we have this idea of where the wheel is and how to rotate, now I can coop. my cooping in time and if I was playing in time I'm just singing a little theme. So now we're going to get into the specifics of cooping one. So the one coop like I said is at the front of the wheel so if you're spatially aligned you can kind of think well this is like the front of where the wheel is right here. Right there so all gravity down. The downstroke so gravity down and then let's talk about this thing with the wrist. So the idea is, is that you don't have like wiggly wrist all over the place. So like you're not like bringing your wrist in or out and you're not like trying to shake somebody's hand. What you're doing is you're just creating some force for a split second. And so what we like to do is kind of employ this idea of like the ejector button. We want to think of this like boop, like that. Boop. Ejector button. Okay, now notice my elbow isn't like doing anything weird either. I'm just like, ha, karate chop. Okay, so um, I'm just gonna give you guys another little uh, bonus video, uh, some advice on the tyrant and the string and adjustment for the dog. So the tyrant, is either going to tighten the string on the dog, 
or loosen the string on the dog. And when you do that, it's going to affect the amount of buzz that is produced by the dog. So instead of like cranking and then adjusting, what you want to do is crank and adjust at the same time because then that will be your, your golden combo. So here, that's way too much, right? Now I'm going to back it off. That's way too little. So now I'm just going to keep cranking. You'll remember from our previous videos when we've talked about cranking in time, that is your downbeat. One, two, three, four. So one, 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 one. one. It's going to be the same position that your downbeat is. So now we're combining our downbeat with where the coupe is. So now if you're playing something, <laughs> but that downbeat is your one, two, three, four. So one, one. So now everything's in time. So you should be coordinated between this arm and this arm. Um, one other thing I'll mention is that um, there's a lot of people, uh, and I was like this at first too, where you're so worried about like getting that coop and being able to make that buzzing sound is that you're like, punching somebody out. So it's like, like that. And when you do that, when you force that, you can see how fast I go. So now I've covered way more of the wheel, way faster than I need to. So everything else is going to be off. So remember when we were cranking in time before, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. It's important to use your metronome when you're first learning the coupe. So I've got this at eight, uh, 88. One, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. There, I'm always on time and I'm always in the same place. And I'm not speeding up or slowing down across the wheel. Because remember, when we're trying to play in time, we're also trying to coop in time. So we don't want to. We don't want to go spastic, okay? And so that's why you got to use the metronome again with just cooping in time and then maybe play your melody line and then add that cooping to the melody line with everything together. So like a good example would be like if I've got a little melody line. So one, two, three, four, one, two. It's just a little exercise going up and down. Now I'm cooping. So you can see, I was playing the melody line with the metronome, and then I can practice just going one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. now melody line. Now together. But that's how everything works, is that you're playing the melody line in time, you're cooping in time, you're using the metronome so that it's checking that you are in time, and then you're combining all of those things together so that they work. And that's how it works. Okay, so that's coop one, fairly simple. All of gravity down, karate chop. Coop three is the opposite. So hucking something over your shoulder, going like this, all gravity up. Um, it also like upstroke you can think of, or like this side of the position of the wheel. So the opposite of the down would be here, the up, right? So if this is down, 
This is up. So there's up, okay? And you can, if you want to think about that thumb, the ejector button down for one, we want to think of the hitchhiker for three. So you're whipping your thumb up, so like that. So you can see what it's doing is I'm doing this with my wrist, just a little bit. So that's where that coupe de poignet comes in, which is the, the, the shift of the wrist, so the, the flick of the wrist. It's not that you're doing this, because what we don't want to do is this. You can hear that's like now making a buzz all the way through the wheel, right? So you can kind of tie the, the efficiency of the buzz in with the metronome beep. So if my metronome hear how that's percussive, That's my buzz, right? So I'm not going. That's a different type of buzz, which there's many of. But at first, what we want to do is we want to articulate the buzz so that it's short and sharp and sweet, because that is going to then segregate where all of our positions are. And again, what we're working on is gravity down, gravity up for one and three, which combines with what we've learned before in all of the other videos on the beats for what we're doing when we're cranking in time. So again, I've got one, three, one, three, down, up, down, up. And I'll use my thumb to kind of show you. And over articulating it so you can hear it and that's how one and three work um, so last thing on this uh, so just be careful when like uh, hopefully you've got a teacher um, to kind of like slap you into shape on this stuff but the thing you don't want to do at first and in, in this like you know you don't want to like overemphasize it to use too much force like we talked about before because that covers too much wheel same thing when you're going up like that you can kind of hear it and get in your shoulder but the other thing is you don't want to do too much with your wrist like this because what that's going to do is that's now you're gonna you're gonna injure yourself well you're gonna hurt yourself and that's just not the right way to do it it's just a little flick so it's just down up down up down up like that just like that, not like this. You don't want to look like that or like that. Because then now you're going all over the shop. Don't go all over the shop. Last bit of advice, if you're like, what the heck? You know, you're trying with the metronome, blah, 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 and you're really not sure. Well, use your video camera on your phone or a mirror or something to, to video yourself so that you can, or look at yourself so you can see what you're doing with your arm. Because you can recognize right away if you're looking at yourself, especially if you, if you video yourself and then you look back later, then you can really say, oh yeah, no, I was a bit sloppy on that. Because sometimes, you know, like with everything, sometimes when you're doing it, you're like, oh yeah, I'm totally great, look at me go. But then you're like, you look back later and you're like, wow, what was I doing? You know, so it's good to check because you don't want to, especially if you don't have a teacher, you don't want to learn technique the wrong way. So double check yourself by videoing yourself or having a mirror or, you know, but always use your metronome because that's like the best way to deal with stuff. Now, how do you practice cooping? Well, we have the Gertie World scale book where there's the scales um, and modes a really good way to practice your cooping at first, because remember, what we're working on is exercises that are efficiently getting you better at what you're doing so that no matter what you wanna play, you can play it. So not just like, hey, I learned a tune, I can play that tune. It's more like, you know, I am working on a certain set of techniques so that I can do whatever I want. When you're playing your scales, you know, that's a good opportunity to use your cooping, right? Okay, now I have to think about this, so. Oh my God. So as a, as a start,
starter, here's a really easy exercise. So your metronome, let's put it down to like 80. So you can definitely do your scales with Kubrum. One and three for every quarter note to a metronome. I had that metronome set to quarter note equals 80. All of the exercises, so those first etudes, you can also use um, with Kubrum. Uh, but we also are going to have a couple of um, new, uh, new pieces in the liner notes for this video that you can use for cooping and playing in time. Okay, last thing. So you're like, woohoo, now I can coop. Yeah, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna play all this random stuff with cooping. Well, that might not work because remember music theory. So if your trumpet is a C trumpet, what tunes are you gonna play? Tunes in C. Yeah! <laughs> so tunes in C. C major, C minor, C modes. Got it? If you have a trumpet that you can capo, so like you've got a C trumpet, but you can capo it to D, then you can play tunes in D, D major, D minor, D modes. No big deal. Some of you may have a G trumpet. Great. G major, G minor, G modes. And if it's capoed, you can capo it to A. Same dealio. It's true you can use like a D trumpet with your G drone and so on and so forth, but we're trying to keep it um, baselining it for beginners right now. So like C trumpet for all things C, D trumpet for all things D and so on and so forth so that it doesn't get too confusing. Um, so thank you for watching this video, and I hope that introducing you to Coops for the first time uh, helped a little bit so that you understand what's going on. Um, like and subscribe, and there's all the links in the description box below so that like you have all of the junk that you need sorted out for this video. Sweet. Until next time. Over and out. <laughs>